In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to use drum maps in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So if you've ever tried to use drum maps in Cakewalk by BandLab, but found yourself confused in a wilderness with a map, but no sound, then fear not my friend because I'm here to save your day. I'm going to explain to you in just a few easy steps how to set up and use drum maps in Cakewalk by BandLab. And it's really quite simple once you know how. So stick around for all of that. Now before we get into that, if you like this kind of content all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos. Now before we get stuck into setting up drum maps, maps, let's take a quick look at what the end result will be. So I thought I'd take a couple of moments to inspire you and show you what the end result of setting up a drum map will be. Here I have a very, very simple song with bass guitar and some drums. And if we go to the bass guitar and open up its piano roll, you'll see that it's a very useful interface indeed because we can access the notes of the bass. And in the grid, it shows uh, the length of the notes. And down here at the bottom, we can adjust the velocity of the notes as well. The velocity being how hard you would hit that note on the keyboard. So for a pitched instrument like a bass guitar, this is very useful. But how does it look when it's applied to drums? Let's go over to a temporary little thing I've got down here. Some drums on a piano roll. And a lot of you are probably using this kind of thing at the moment. Now, again, you can play with different notes here and it shows a duration and a velocity. Now the duration is not very important or not at all important for us for drums because when you hit a, a drum sound on a keyboard, or on a drum pad or what have you, it has a fixed duration. You can't control the duration of that note. So the duration is irrelevant to us for drums. Um, and then it's very, very difficult on this piano roll to know which drum is which. <laughs> unless you learn it for every single virtual kit that you use. Not only that, but often these kits, when they're very large, are spread over a large area on the piano roll. So for some sort of uh, weird uh, cymbal crash, you may be having to scroll all the way up to the top here and find it there somewhere, and you'll be clicking around to find which one is which, and it all gets to be a little bit of a pain. So how does it look when we apply a drum map to this? Well, I'm glad you asked because I've prepared one here. I'll just solo it and I'll go to it. Now you can see things look quite different. Let me just zoom in for you so you can see what's going on. So first of all, we don't actually have um, any tails to this in terms of the duration. We don't need to know the duration of the notes here for drums. So it's useful that we don't have that information. Then we have all of the names of the drums in this particular drum kit down here. So we can easily see which one is which. And if we're not totally sure, we can click on it and we can hear the sound of that drum. And if you're wondering what these weird little tails are on each of the beats here, that is for velocity. We can easily go in and we can just adjust the velocity of a particular drum like so. So that makes things very easy indeed. We can also do things like solo particular drums. So let's say we just wanna to listen to the hi-hat here, the closed hi-hat, I'll solo that and I'll play the track. Or indeed, we could do sort of things that we would normally do in a console, like mute things. So let's mute this symbol here, this crash symbol. And I'll unmute it. So there's lots and lots of features beyond that which make drum maps very, very useful. And you'll notice as well that all of these drums are close together. The ones that I've got in use, I've put them close together. And that's because you can do cool things like drag uh, drums around. So let's say I was making use of this open hi-hat here. In fact, let's uh, put an open hi-hat. We'll change one of the closed hi-hat notes to an open hi-hat. We'll just drag it down there. Have a listen to that. Okay, cool, and I'm gonna be using that quite often. So I'll just grab that and I'll drag it up there so that it's up there with all of the other drums that I'm using often in this song. So drum maps are cool and easy to use and should make editing and programming drums much easier for you. So let's go about setting one up. 
So in order to demonstrate to you how to set up drum maps in Cakewalk by BandLab, I'll be using the free virtual drum kit which comes with it, which is called SI Drum Kit. Now, if you're gonna be using a different virtual drum kit, it doesn't matter, the same principles do apply. I'll also be using a drum map which I created especially for this kit. And if you wanna use that, you can download that using the link in the description down below. It's completely free. And if you follow that link, there's also some instructions there about how to install drum maps on your Windows system. Now, some people do still have some problems with that, so I'll be covering that a little bit at the end of this video. So let's go ahead and actually create some drum maps. So I'll start off by dragging the SI drum kit over into my track view here, and that uh, creates this pop-up here, which I'll zoom into so you can see which choices I make. Um, and I'm gonna select to have a MIDI source and also the first synth audio output. So a couple of things selected there, and then I'll go ahead and I'll click OK. And that creates two new tracks here. The first of those tracks is the actual virtual instrument itself. If I click on the icon, you'll see it here. And if I click there, you'll hear the actual drums. So I tend to think of this as an actual audio track. This is where the actual sound of the drums is coming, as if we've recorded them in a recording studio and we're just controlling that sound on our console. And it's created a track in the console down here for that. Now the second track which it's created is a MIDI track. And this is what I like to think of as the play information. This tells you when the drummer hit the drum and you know how hard, and that is represented Presented by MIDI and if we go into the piano roll for that you can see it looks just like this which is exactly what we don't want we need to apply a drum map okay so how do we do that we start off by going up to the uh, to edit up here we'll click on edit and go to preferences and that pops up this box up here which I'll zoom into again so you can see what's going on now we need to select the drum map manager down here it's about halfway down now if you can't see it, make sure that you have advanced selected down here. If you have it on basic, you won't be able to see it. So with advanced selected, click on drum map manager. And I'm gonna start off by creating a new drum map. So I'll click here on new, and that creates a drum map called DM1. Remember that for later. And then I'm actually gonna set it up using a preset, the one that I, the drum map which I told you I created earlier. So I'll go to presets here. I'm gonna find that drum map, it's called SI drum kit. So it's all the way down here. You can see I've got lots of drum maps on my system. SI drum kit, I'll click on that. And you can see here that it's automatically filled out these spaces. Now, if you look carefully, there's a name for each drum here in the drum map. There's some note information about which note actually gets played on the virtual instrument when we hit it on our keyboard. And then most importantly is this out port. Now, for me, it has the SI drum kit automatically selected as its output, but it may not do that for you. It may select some other virtual instrument. And you may indeed want to actually set a drum map to a MIDI output rather than a virtual instrument. So I'm gonna show you how to change all of these in one hit. And this is very, very important because I used to do this one by one and it drove me crazy. So you could benefit from my past experience. I'm gonna select the first one here. I'm gonna hit uh, hold shift on the keyboard, scroll all the way down and select the last one as well. And you can see there that I've got all of the different drums in the drum map selected. Now, most importantly, I'm going to hold shift and control on the keyboard at the same time. And then I'm going to select a different output. Let's say I want to send this to a MIDI port. I'll do it to one I've got here called C source. I select that and you can see that for every single drum, the output has changed. So let's imagine you've just added this um, drum kit with the preset and it's selected the wrong output. It, you want the, actually the SI uh, drum kit. So I'm gonna do the same again. I've got all the drums selected. I'll hold shift and control on the keyboard and I'll do what I want. I'll select what I want here, which is the SI drum kit. So you can see the output changes there. All I have to do then is click on apply. 
Now, I'll close that. We're not quite finished yet because if we go, if we have this uh, MIDI track selected um, and we go to our piano roll, we're still seeing the same thing. What we need to do with the MIDI track is just expand it a little and you'll see the output selection here. So if I click on that, you'll see that there is a new selection right at the bottom and it's called DM1 SI Drum Kit. Remember DM1 was the name of our drum map. So I'll click on that. And that means the output for the MIDI is going to that drum map. So let's go to the piano roll now. And now we can see our actual drum map. And if I click on that, you can just about hear the different drums. And that is because we assigned the output of the drum map to go to our virtual instrument up here. So it goes from the MIDI track to the drum map to the virtual instrument. And that's where a lot of people get confused, I think, because they don't actually set the output for their drum map or uh, do all kinds of crazy things. So that is the process of actually setting up the drum map for your virtual drum kit. Now I'm gonna cover a little bit about installation because some people have told me they're a bit confused with that. So some people have told me that they've had problems installing drum maps on their system and making them available in Cakewalk by BandLab. So if that's you, hopefully I can solve that problem for you now in this little section. Now if you go to the link which I talked about earlier and it's down in the description, it'll take you to this page which you can see here. Now this is actually a page I made a while ago uh, for a tutorial I made about making drum beats in Cakewalk by BandLab. And on this page I've made available three three different uh, drum kit maps uh, for you to download for free. And the top one there is the SI drum kit, which we used in this tutorial. Now, when you download one of those files, it will be in, uh, it will be a zip file. So in step one of the instructions, I tell you that you need to extract the map file, which is within that zip file to any place on your system. It doesn't matter. It's just a temporary file location. Now in the second step, we're going to move it to a specific folder, but which folder you move it to or where the location of that folder is depends on whether you're using Cakewalk by BandLab or whether you're still using Sona. And that's reflected in the instructions I give on this page where I give a couple of different locations. Now I'm going to focus on the location for Cakewalk by BandLab here. But if you're having problems with uh, installing these for Sona, if you continue to watch these instructions, um, you may still be able to solve those problems uh, with what I tell you anyway. So watch on regardless. So I'm going to change the view here so we can see the instructions still, but we can also see um, the root drive of my computer, which is the C drive. And you can see in the instructions, I say you need to go um, to, first of all, to the user folder or the users folder um, on the C drive. So I'll find that and double click on it there. And that takes me to the users folder. And in there, there's going to be one or more folders. Now, the folder that you're looking for is going to be different for you than it is for me, because it depends on your username on Windows. So mine happens to be called Mike E here. That's the name of the folder, which is for my user account on the Windows system. But as I say, yours is going to be different, but it should be fairly obvious to you which one of those folders is your user folder once you're in there. So I'll double click on my Mike E folder, which is my user folder. And once I'm in there, I'm looking for a folder called app data or app data, depending on which country of the English speaking countries you come from. Now you can see that I can't actually see it here. And this is where most people come unstuck. They say, I can't find the file location that you talk about in your instructions. So what you actually need to do is show hidden folders because this is actually a hidden folder on the Windows system. Now here in Windows 10, this is how you do it. You go up to the view uh, pane or the view tab at the top here, you click on that, and then you click on the option over here to show hidden items. And that will then show all the hidden folders there, including the app data or app data folder, which we're going to use in this tutorial. Now, if you're using a different version of Windows other than Windows 10, it might be a little bit different. Um, you may be using Windows 8 or Windows XP or Windows 7 or even Windows Vista, if anyone uses that anymore. And it's going to be a little different for you to show hidden files and folders. So what you need to do is just quickly Google show hidden files and folders for whatever Windows system you're using 
and then it will show you in some fairly brief instructions how to show hidden files and folders. So now that I'm showing um, this app data folder, I'm gonna double click on it to open that. Then I'm gonna go to the folder called roaming. And then once I'm within roaming, I go down to the cakewalk folder, which will be here, click on that. And then within the cakewalk folder, I go to cakewalk core, clicking on that. And then within Cakewalk Core is a, a drum maps folder. And of course I go in there and there you can see all of the drum maps I already have in my system. So if you move your, or, you know, copy and paste your uh, map file, which you've downloaded into this folder, then the next time you start up Cakewalk and you go to your preferences and you create a new drum map, in the presets you should see the new map which you've put in this folder. So hopefully you are now unstuck because of this tutorial, but if you're still confused, then please do ask in the comments down below and I'll do my very best to help you out. Now if you did like this video and you think other people would benefit from watching it, then please do make sure you hit the like button, that really helps me out. If you didn't like this video for any reason, then hit the dislike button twice or even four times if you feel really angry about it. If you like this kind of content, then please do make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about future videos and I'll see you in the next video.